You're looking at a fortune in ivory going up in smoke. It is Kenya's way of dealing with illegal ivory. Destroy it before it ends up on the black market. Elephants were on the verge of extinction before the global ban on ivory in 1989, and some say the animals are still threatened. The World Wildlife Fund estimates that Africa had three to five million elephants in 1900. But by the late 1980s, there were only half a million left. Some 500 to 700,000 remain today. The fund says Central and Eastern African nations lost almost 90% of their elephants to poachers. Armed guards now protect elephants in Kenya, but they don't always succeed. Elephants are now protected by the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species, known as CITES. At the CITES Convention at The Hague last year, Peter Puchel of the International Fund for Animal Welfare warned of the huge black market. Everybody has recognized that there is an increase of illegal ivory being smuggled into Asia and an increase in poaching on the ground in Africa where more than 20,000 elephants get killed annually now. The U.S. Congress passed an African Elephant Conservation Act in 1988 and renewed the act again last year. The law bans imports of ivory or elephant parts and provides funds for international wildlife conservation programs. Representative Madeleine Bordallo of the U.S. Territory of Guam chairs the Congressional Subcommittee on Wildlife. We uh, sometimes do not realize just exactly how severe this program or this problem is. And uh, I was extremely uh, interested in reading the National Geographic uh, story by Dr. Fay, and he was here today to answer some of our questions. Explorer and conservationist Michael Fay wrote about protecting elephants in Chad, where he trains guards to fight poachers. Anti-poaching or protection or, or um, you know, guard forces are, are one tool, a very small part usually of what, of what we do. Joshua Ginsburg of the U.S.-based Wildlife Conservation Society works with anti-poaching groups. Well, in many places we've helped them turn from being a poacher into being an enforcer. Conservation programs in some African countries have had unintended consequences. Officials say an increase in the elephant population is threatening humans and damaging crops. An elephant consumes 300 kilograms of vegetation a day. In Kenya, when the growth of the elephant population led to overcrowding in 2005, the government relocated 400 elephants some 350 kilometers away to a northern national park. Some southern African countries with stable elephant populations say they need ivory sales to finance conservation. Botswana, Zimbabwe, and Namibia have recently succeeded in having the ban partially lifted to sell ivory. South Africa says it has too many elephants and has announced plans to resume its elephant cull after 13 years. Environmental Minister Marthanus Van Schokwik. From the 1st of May, there will no longer, as a policy, be a moratorium on the culling of elephants. South African officials say their elephant population has more than doubled since 1995 and culling is the only way to keep the number under control. Michelle Pickover from Animal Rights Africa disagrees. They want to harvest elephants so they can have ivory. Other activists say culling elephants increases the demand for ivory and threatens the species survival. They argue that if some countries have too many elephants, the animals should be moved to other parts of the continent. Some are pushing for a tourism boycott of South Africa because of the culling policy. Carolyn Turner, VOA News.